New Year, New Time. Watch Conversations with Christ every Sunday at 10 a.m. And I'll tell you why. Because God said a thousand years is like a day for me. And that's why you could have a thief on the cross pray for just a few seconds and get forever and get forgiveness and get eternity. So every single Sunday for 30 minutes, we're going to praise God together. So every Sunday at 10 a.m., Conversations with Christ. The ZNS Network, the People Station. Coming up in the Bahamas tonight, the weekend edition. North Abaco Fathers hear from the Prime Minister. COVID vaccine options widen. And home porting celebrations in order. Those stories and more coming up on the Bahamas tonight. The weekend edition returns. The Ministry of Health wishes to advise members of the public that prevention is key during this flu season. Practicing good cough hygiene can make the difference between you and your loved ones getting the flu or spreading the influenza virus. Good cough hygiene habits include covering your mouth and nose with a tissue when coughing or sneezing and proper disposal of the tissue in a trash bin. Coughing or sneezing into your upper sleeve near your inner elbow and not your hands when a tissue is not available. Avoiding the use of handkerchiefs and towels as they hold germs, becoming a nest for the virus. And frequently washing your hands with soap and water, which is listed as one of the most important steps you can take to avoid getting sick and passing the virus on to others. If you have any questions about how to practice good cough hygiene to avoid catching or spreading the flu, contact your nearest community clinic or the Health Education Division at the Ministry of Health. This message is brought to you by the Ministry of Health in partnership with the Public Hospitals Authority. Good evening, everyone. I'm Akash Lopindo with The Bahamas Tonight Weekend Edition. Thanks for joining us. Abaconians today encouraged to get ready for more investment as that island bounces back from the destruction of 2019's Hurricane Dorian. Bringing the keynote address at a post Father's Day banquet in North Abaco this afternoon was Prime Minister, the most honorable Dr. Hubert Minnis, who updated attendees on the $210,000 repair work to the Murphy Town Southside Dock and the construction of homes in Central Pines. These have been given to individuals from Africa whose homes have been destroyed. They will be given to those respective individuals free of charge. We have already gotten commitment for an additional 10 homes. We're only finalizing so that as these five homes are coming here, an additional 10 will be provided in the central time period. <laughs> these two will be given to worthy individuals again. We have tried for our formulas. <laughs> Now, speaking directly to fathers, the Prime Minister cited scripture, stressing that a father's love always protects. He encouraged the honorees to continue their efforts to build up their community. How old we are, no matter our life journey, no matter our successes or failures, the father's love is the bedrock and foundation. That our fathers are still happy with us, or is with us in spirit. Such love is a young and now, as officials continue to stress, vaccination is key to the country returning to a greater sense of normalcy. At last count, nearly 80,000 people across the country had been vaccinated, 54 plus thousand with the first dose, and just over 25,000 fully inoculated. During a keynote address at a Bahamas Technical and Vocational Institute event this past Friday, the Prime Minister used the opportunity to again stress the need for Bahamians to get the shot and to get it as soon as possible. Let me say to the graduates that in order to be hired some places, 
They may require proof of vaccination, and if not, they may require you to perform a test weekly at your expense. Protect yourself. The vaccine is free. Registration is easy. If you had a first dose, please make sure you receive the second dose for maximum protection. If you have not yet received the first dose, you should make an appointment today at vax.gov.bs. Or visit one of our walk-up vaccination centers. Visit opm.gov.bs slash forward vaccine. For more information on the COVID-19 vaccine and the vaccination schedules. Now, speaking of schedules, between Monday, June 28th and Friday, July 2nd, those of you interested in getting the shot can head on over to Loyola Hall, Gladstone Road, beginning at 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., appointments only. The site is closed on Monday. Meantime, the Church of God of Prophecy, East Street, is open between 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. There, you walk up appointments are accepted. Well, yet another COVID-19 vaccine will soon be on the global market. The government of Cuba announcing that phase three clinical trials of its Abdallah vaccine has shown 92% efficacy and can be considered the fourth most effective vaccine in the world. International media reporting that Cuban scientists have worked on developing this vaccine for the past 13 months. The Cuban government mounted a massive campaign using the vaccine last month and positive COVID-19 cases have reportedly lowered. Now, while Cuba is in the midst of a massive economic crisis, the government saw it fit to use its funds to develop the Abdallah vaccine. The idea is to sell it to Latin American, African, and Asian countries in hopes of generating an economic rebound. Well, the latest dashboard, meantime, showing seven new COVID cases in country, four in Grand Bahama, one each in New Providence and Eleuthera, with the location of the other pending. One of the newly confirmed showing a history of travel within 14 days. The nationwide total cases now at 12,504. Meantime, 40 people are in hospital, two of them in the intensive care unit. Saturday also accounted for 44 recoveries, pushing that figure to 11,535 on June 25th. 147 COVID tests had been completed, one of them a repeat. Well, another shot in the arm for tourism and at a time in the country needs it most. Officials are gearing up to celebrate the first sailing of the Crystal Serenity this Saturday, July 3rd. On July 4th, it'll make its way on to Bimini where grand inauguration festivities await. From there, it's on to the Exumas, Long Island and San Salvador. As Crystal Cruises president Jack Anderson puts it, the choice to create an itinerary in the Bahamas was an easy one, considering their two top priorities, and that's to offer guests an option that was close to home while also driving economic growth in various ports of call. Tourism Minister the Honorable Denisio Diagler acknowledging there's a lot to celebrate, adding that his team has been working tirelessly to ensure the Bahamas is safe for both locals and tourists. As for Crystal Cruises, he says the company has shown it has a deep interest in the islands of the Bahamas and is assisting to reinvigorate the economy by making stops in numerous islands. Prime Minister the Most Honorable Dr. Hubert Minnis is expected to bring the keynote address at the home porting inauguration ceremony. Now, for those of you planning summer travels to the U.S., there are some things to keep in mind if you're using the Linden Pinling International Airport. One, arrive at the airport at least three to three and a half hours prior to the scheduled departure of your flight. Two, vaccinated or not, a negative COVID-19 test result, and that's PCR or rapid antigen taken not more than 72 hours prior to travel, and a completed and testation form is required. The form is available on the airport's website, and that's www.nasalpia.com. Three, avoid travel on Saturdays and Sundays. Instead, choose less busy days like Tuesdays or Wednesdays. And four, schedule flights for before 9 a.m. or after 2 p.m. Well, speaking of traveling, the Bahamas seems to be taking the lead when it comes to COVID-19 travel testing protocols in the region, namely the Travel Health Visa. 
Trinidad and Tobago Prime Minister, the Honorable Dr. Keith Rowley, announcing yesterday that the Twin Islands borders will officially reopen on July 17th. Now, among the measures to accommodate the opening is a digital app enabling travelers to provide their personal information, including health status, to arrive in the country. The app to be launched in about two weeks would be similar to digital COVID-19 testing systems already in place in other Caribbean countries. According to Trinidad and Tobago Media, the country's borders have been closed since March 22nd last year. There will be strict COVID-19 travel protocols in place for citizens, non-nationals, and foreigners traveling there. When we return, details of an alleged murderer and armed robber on the loose and nationwide safety initiative wraps up. You're watching The Bahamas Tonight, the weekend edition. Stay with us. Anything you need, we got you covered. Say the word and we'll come through. So if you need coverage for life, choose BAF, they'll get it right. Just go out and do it. It's your life, so just live it. So anything you want, you can get it. The best choice, BAF, that's BAF Alive. This portion of the news is brought to you by Sun Oil Limited Shell, fueling journeys that matter. The Criminal Investigation Division issuing an all-points bulletin for 20-year-old Lovato Dean of Fox Hill. Police want to question the young man in relation to murder and armed robbery. Dean's described as having dark brown complexion and slim build. Anyone with information that can lead to police closing in on Dean should call into the Criminal Investigation Department, and that's at 502-9991, 502-9992-911, your nearest police station, or simply download the P3 Tips app. Well, quite a night for a group of officers here in the Capitol who were led on a high-speed chase just before 8 last evening. Police say it was around that time that a team was patrolling the Blue Hill Road and Coconut Grove area when they spotted the occupant of a silver vehicle driving recklessly. An attempt to stop the driver led to a chase. Still, we're told the car eventually stopped at the intersection of Amos Ferguson Street and Balfour Avenue when the man exited the vehicle and started running. It's then that one of the officers noticed the man removing an object from his waist. In fear of his life, the officer discharged his service weapon in the direction of the suspect, who was later caught unharmed. Officers also recovered a pistol. Now, authorities also reporting that moments later, a woman outside during the incident complained of leg injuries consistent with gunshot wounds. She was taken to hospital, her condition stable. Investigations continue. Over in Exuma, police last night executed a search warrant on a Moss Town home. There they found a pistol with nine rounds of ammunition. A man was taken into custody. Remain vigilant and prepared. The main message the Bahamas National Neighborhood Watch Council is pushing as Community Safety Week comes to a close. The whole objective, to raise awareness and take the message of crime prevention and disaster preparedness to the communities. The council's week-long safety conference hosting presentations ranging from health to fire hazards. I dare to say that as we continue to move through our communities, I want to encourage everyone throughout the Commonwealth of the Bahamas to be your neighbor keeper. We have found out that since communities are together, which is over 167 watch groups throughout the country, which include New Providence, Grand Bahama, Abaco, Exuma, and Eleuthera, we have seen in our communities that crime has decreased. Neighborhood Watch Council Chairman Kino Wong also speaking further on the impact the group 
has had on crime. We know that we are in a, a climate zone where hurricanes are always coming into our country. And we really want to inform the community, the wider community, on how to prepare and to be informed and educated on, on these particular topics. Um, in recent time, we, we saw on, in the community where a whole, almost a whole block um, of homes were destroyed by fire. And we wanted to really inform our communities how important it is to, to be prepared said we're wrapping up just the first month of the Atlantic hurricane season, but with five more to go, local organizations are by no means letting their guards down. Social Services Minister, the Honorable Frankie Campbell, shares with us the state of shelters in the event they're needed. I'm advised that those buildings have been identified, inspections are done, work is ongoing because we would appreciate that there are some changes that will be made only as uh, the, the hurricane is approaching. But the teams are in place. We do what we do. We have been doing it for years and we thank all those persons who will be partnering with us should the need arise. In other news this evening, the body count increasing by five following Thursday's partial collapse of the Florida Surfside high-rise condo. U.S. media now reporting the death of nine people as 150 people remain missing. Built in the 1980s, Chaplin Towers South in North Miami was up for its 40-year recertification. From all reports, over time it had gone through extensive inspections due to deterioration. The condo association was preparing to make updates and repairs. Council General in Miami, Florida, Linda Mackey, is confirming in a release yesterday that, to date, her office is not aware of any Bahamian nationals being involved in Thursday's tragedy. Again, the Bahamas extends its thoughts and prayers with the United States during this especially difficult period. Officials over at the Bahamas Technical and Vocational Institute extremely pleased with the response to the National Center for Construction and Education Research Program. Nearly 50 Bahamians this week graduated. BTVI works with officials from Valencia College in Florida to provide technical certification in a range of courses they hope can bridge the skills gap across the country. With just over 1,000 individuals set to participate in the next session, BTVI President Dr. Robert Robertson says students feel they can adapt to the program's virtual component. It's a shorter program, it's compressed, and that's the way of the future. Uh, it has more technology in it, and younger people in particular, they embrace technology. We all complain about, you know, online classes and stuff, but uh, students see that and they appreciate it and they do well at it. And belated birthday greetings in order for Dame Marguerite Pinling, who celebrated her 89th birthday on Saturday. Born in Camps Bay, Andros, Dame Marguerite, alongside her husband, the late Right Honorable Sir Lyndon Pinling, became one of the principals in the struggle for majority rule and social justice. Born into humble circumstances, she consorted with heads of states, governments, and royalty, and also served with distinction as head of state for the Bahamas as a former Governor General. Well, as we head to the break, we'd like to thank all our viewers watching us live on our social media platforms. And just in case you missed the news, be sure to head there to catch up. Stay with us. There's more after the break. Elevate your experience with BTC Superfast Fiber Home Internet, which unlocks unlimited mobile talk, data, and roaming for as low as $50 per line. Enjoy more savings and value with internet speeds of up to 600 megabits per second and all the connectivity you need on the go. An elevated experience starts with BTC at home, powering unlimited mobile talk, data, and roaming, plus great savings. Visit a BTC store or btcbahamas.com for more details. ZNS Total Sports is brought to you by Fourth Terrace Diagnostic Center.
Welcome to your Sunday sports. Well, action continuing yesterday over at the pools at the Betty Kelly Canning Aquatic Center for day three of the Bahamas Swimming Federation's 2021 Nationals, where dozens of local as well as international swimmers were in action. We caught up with the Federation's president, Aljun Cargill, on how the meet has been progressing. Actually, it's been better than expected. Um, we were very fortunate to secure the approval of the Ministry of Health to actually um, implement our swimming calendar for this year. And our swimming calendar includes the 49th National Swimming Championships. We started on Thursday morning, and it, and it continues until Sunday afternoon. It's a four-day event. It's a FINA qualifier. So we have over 100 international athletes who have traveled to the Bahamas to compete um, to represent their countries in the Tokyo Olympic Games, as well as our own athletes um, who are seeking to represent the Bahamas either in the Olympic Games, Carifta, CC Can, or the World Championships. And um, we miss the spectators in the stands, of course, but notwithstanding, the competition has been excellent. We see some balance in the competition, but overall, um, we're very pleased with what we're seeing. Several stellar performances in the water. Scrifta standout Marvin Johnson would continue to look like one of the most promising swimming prospects in recent memory, winning all of his individual events of the day. Uh, my performance there is pretty good. Coming in, uh, national schedule, we were supposed to do doubles every day. So I knew in my mind that I had to be ready to swim and then swim again. So I was just getting ready and I was able to do it today and have to do it one more day. So it's pretty good. Setting a new national record in the girls' under age 50 meter fly was Taylor Nichols. Like, I am really happy about what I just did. I was a little tired even though my goggles fell off and my eyes are still burning. In basketball news, the Phoenix Suns are now one win away from the NBA Finals as Bohemian DeAndre Ayton would have a monster game for performance in L.A., registering 19 points, 22 rebounds, 4 blocks, 3 assists, and a steal across 41 minutes of play in Saturday's 84-80 win over the Los Angeles Clippers to go up 3-1 in the Western Conference Finals. Aiden registered his second double-double of the series and pulled down a playoff-high 22 rebounds in a game where he made his presence felt on both ends of the floor. Despite dealing with Ivica Zubak all game long, Aiden is averaging 20 points, 13 rebounds, and one block per game in this series against the Clippers. He spoke after the game. I start off with my teammates. Uh, we're really relentless. Um, you know, uh, we have a thing on the team where something called togetherness and you know we play as a unit we come together and we just you know fight over adversity and fight over fatigue our mental stamina was there today and we did a good job of that and me i learned i don't know i could keep going you know there's another level i learned that i i know i think i i reached the next level that i really need to be you know be at at this at this level when it comes to competing as for the impact of veteran guard chris paul Oh, I love CP, man. Um, I, like I said, that's the that's really the only teammate that really pushed me, like big bro type push. Knowing what I got, and I never thought that I had. I think it's he was the best thing that happened to my career. You know, I can say that every day. Um, you know, just C is really a dude who pays attention to detail. Um, it's not how he said; it's what he said. And that's when we look at sports. A quick check on weather when we return. ZNS Total Sports is brought to you by 4th Terrace Diagnostic Center. Everyone's excited about the $8 meal of the day. Every day, it's a different 6-inch sub, plus chips and a 20-ounce drink for just $8. That feels like fresh value. Come in any day of the week for one of your favorite 6-inch subs. Like turkey breast, meatball marinara, sweet onion chicken teriyaki, black forest ham, Italian BMT, oven roasted chicken, and tuna. Then add chips and a 20-ounce drink, and you've got the $8 meal of the day. A great meal at a great price every day of the week, only at Subway. It is important to take precautions to reduce your risk of getting infected with COVID-19, even when you go to the grocery store. Practice physical distancing that is six feet apart from others while you wait in line to enter the store. One person per household needs to go. Use wipes to disinfect the cart or basket handle that you select. Avoid touching your face, unnecessary items, and surfaces. Try to touch only what you are buying. 
so carry a grocery list to help you move along quickly. Do not forget to wear a cloth mask while you do your shopping and carry hand sanitizer with you. Practice physical distancing that is six feet apart from others as you shop. And at the cash register. as little time as possible in the store and get enough groceries to last you for a while. Once your groceries are packed and loaded, use hand sanitizer and rub your hands together until they are completely dry. When you come home from the grocery store, take off your shoes at the door and put all of your grocery bags in one area. Disinfect your grocery bags. Rinse produce and wipe down cans and packages with soap and water before you put them away. Wash your hands thoroughly for 20 seconds when you are done. Wash your clothes and your reusable grocery bags. This message has been brought to you by the Ministry of Health in conjunction with the Broadcasting Corporation of the Bahamas. Well, it's time now for a check on tonight's weather, and for that, we turn to Chief Meteorologist Basil Dean. Good evening, Basil. Uh, good evening, Makishra. Outside of our studio at this hour, we have some light rain showers under cloudy skies, temperature at 82 degrees. The relative humidity is 73%. The winds are out of the east at 13 miles per hour. The barometric pressure, 1,018.4 millibars or 30.00 inches, and the pressure is steady. Temperatures around the islands this evening, 79 degrees in Marsh, Arbabaco, 82 in Green Toll Key. 82 also in Freeport, Grand Bahama, the Berry Islands at 85, 85 also in uh, Bimini. As we take you into Harbor Island, 83 degrees there. Rock, Sound, Elutra, Otterstown, Cut Island, all at 83 degrees. Fresh Creek and Central Islanders at 84 degrees. 83 in Georgetown, Exuma, Otterstown, Cut Island. Rum Key and San Salvador at 83 degrees. Another string of 83s in Ragged Island, Clarence, Sound Island, Crooked Island, Betsy Bay, and Aculus. Matthew Town and Niagara also at 83, and the Turks and Cakes Islands also putting up 83 degrees this evening. And our boating forecast for tonight in the northwestern islands, easterly wind speeds 10 to 15 knots, wave heights 2 to 4 feet. High tide will take place at 11.05 tonight in the central and southeastern islands. The wind's just a little stronger at 12 to 18 knots out of the east to southeast. Wave heights 3 to 6 feet, waiting margin chop. So we have caution flags in place for boaters in the central and southeastern islands tomorrow. Monday, tomorrow, we can expect a southeasterly flow in the northwestern islands. 10 to 15 knots, wave heights 2 to 4 feet. High tide tomorrow morning at 11.33, low tide at 5.37 in the afternoon. For the central and southeast analysis on Monday, winds swinging out of the southeast at 12.30 knots, wave heights holding at 3 to 6 feet. Satellite picture, uh, well, you're showing that area of low pressure uh, just to the east of the uh, east coast of the United States. That is expected to develop into a tropical depression, possibly by tomorrow. 50% chance of that happening as it takes a move towards the west at about 20 miles per hour. It should make landfall sometime late on Monday, but we'll see what happens with that. A reconnaissance aircraft is expected to fly into that system sometime late tomorrow afternoon. There's another tropical wave well into to the far eastern Atlantic has about a 10% chance of developing. That could be bumped up to about 30% as we head into the middle of the week. So we'll keep our eyes on that and keep you posted. Closer to home, high pressure will be the predominant uh, factor over the next couple of days, but we still have that little troughing just to the uh, north of the Bahamas, and that will continue to fire pockets of showers and thunderstorms or parts of the northwest Bahamas tomorrow. Our forecast for tonight could also partly cloudy conditions with a passing shower or two in the mix. Low temperature down to 70 degrees tonight, 79 degrees, pardon me, and tomorrow it's going to be intervals of clouds and sunshine, but as we head into the afternoon with the temperatures starting to rise, we can can see one or two pop-up showers taking place in the afternoon as well. High temperature tomorrow, 89 degrees, and your extended weather forecast. We'll see more showers work their way into the forecast on Tuesday, and that will carry us right into Thursday, where some of those showers could be heavy at times. But thereafter, we expect things to clear up a bit on Friday, heading into the weekend with lots of sunshine. Temperatures well into the upper 80s during the daytime, upper 70s during the nighttime. Kishla. Well, thanks, Basil. And that ends The Bahamas Tonight, the weekend edition. Thanks for making us your number one news and information network. Only The Sun covers The Bahamas better than ZNS. On behalf of the entire team here, thanks for watching.
and good night. Watching the ZNS Network, the People Station. Seemed to shut up on you for a while, but guess what? The doors are about to open. In this 21st century, a resonant voice cries out for the empowerment of the poor, reinstatement of the outcasts, restoration of the abused, and the simple preaching and teaching of the gospel to stimulate victorious Christian living. I'm telling you, God is able! Camp Road Ministries presents Practical Principles for Successful Christian Living, a program designed to develop the whole man through spiritual enrichment, promoting healthy lifestyles, encouraging education, and training ambassadors to spread the gospel, building lives one person at a time. scripture that we've been uh, dealing with all month in, our, in this text, we find a father who believed Jesus when he said, all things are